I will bend like a reed in the wind. Now, if you want to get the full general theory of Graviton Solution, on YouTube, you can put in Lunch with a Professor, Part 1, Part 2, up through Part 15. And that's about a two-hour version of the theory. This is the quicker version of this. And so what we have is if we have two equal amounts of substance in the universe, then we're not just going to have four forces for mass in the third dimension. We're going to have four forces that are parallel forces for consciousness in the fifth dimension. That really sets up an interesting dynamic. And the first dynamic of that is we have the first primary force in mass, which is gravitation. And then we have consolution, which is its parallel force, which I'll get to in a moment. Now, gravitation has not been defined to the satisfaction of science, right? And so I had to start from scratch there. I actually spent five years, I spent 17 years on this theory, and I spent five years trying to figure out what the correct definition for gravitation was. And we have Newton's laws of uh, gravitation. Uh, we have Einstein's the, uh, bending of light uh, from gravitational forces. There's indications of gravitation, but not a really good definition. So I went back, took a look at it, and what I saw was this. That you have this big bang, and you have the lightest form of substance, hydrogen, which is the most energetic that disperses out. Then it forms suns, keeps going, um, it, the suns burn out, and then they compress, and the outer shell of it breaks off, and that's what part of the planets are. The calcium in our bones comes from stars. Um, and uh, so you have this compression of mass to denser forms. And essentially what you have is you have this. You have, let's, now this is just a depiction this is not the shape of the universe or anything. But let's say all the mass comes out here, like this, and you have, it's still spreading out, but you have stars that form, and then mass starts to um, compress to denser forms. And at the far end of that compression, you have black holes. In this theory, now see, the universe can either end in one black hole or it can expand forever, which a lot of scientists believe now that it'll expand forever. I don't. I think it'll all end up back in one spot. So if it ends up back in one spot, what do we have? It's all back in here in one black hole. How does it make that transition? Well, we'll talk about that in a little bit here. But let's just stick with these two forces here to keep it simple and keep us going here on this theory. So what is consolution? Consolution is a combination of two words, consciousness and evolution. That is to say, each individual bit of consciousness, me, you, everyone, has an evolution that you're going through as your consciousness compresses in parallel with mass compressing in the universe. And so we have a similar idea here where when this mass went out, consciousness went out with it. And I'll explain how that works too. And it was diffused and out here, but it was at a lowest form of consciousness, whereas this was at a highest level of energy. So there's a there's an opposite thing going on there. There is a um, disparate energy going on here. And so this consciousness all ends up here. How does it end up here? It ends up here as one God. And this ends up as one black hole. And what is it? It's at minimal energy. And what is this? This is at peaked energy. Can you imagine a God consciousness would be peaked? So just as mass can compress into its end product black hole, consciousness, like you and me, can compress into a god, much the way people believe Buddha and Christ did. And so each one of us in this theory has that capability, and that all consciousness eventually will end up in this single god. So in this theory, when I talk about this and I write it out, 
I only ever use the big G for at the end of this cycle, this universe cycle. The rest of the universe is composed of small g's. And small g example would be Christ or Buddha. They're out there somewhere, you know. But anyway, um, they are compressing in parallel. So how simple is that? You have the compression of mass that's spread out to eventuate back in one black hole. And you have the compression of consciousness to end up back in one black hole. And how do they start out? This starts out, consciousness starts out as minimal in its energy level. And mass starts out as peaked in hydrogen. And so this is what I call the differential energy expression of the universe. That over the duration of the universe, this parallel compression as it goes on, eventuates with consciousness at peak and mass at minimal. They just go in opposite directions. Why? So we can facilitate an infinite flow of energy from big bang to big crunch. What happens here? This God consciousness transfers its energy into the mass to expand the mass out. So now suddenly the mass is energized. It's hydrogen. And in so doing, that consciousness is minimal. So what does the consciousness have to do? What does the consciousness have to do to compress to higher thought levels? Higher thought levels in this equation. What does it have to do? It has to work its way back up. And how does it do that? It does that in life forms. Just as evolution begins with a single-celled organism, guess what's right there? Lowest form consciousness. They are at the same level. It's what I call the equally complex attraction rule. That the complexity level of that organism attracts an equally complex thought level. The complexity of my DNA is equal to the thought level complexity of my consciousness. There, you can't have it not work that way. It has to. For this system to work. For it to incrementally work its way up. Um, life forms have to evolve, consciousness have to evolve in parallel. Now a lot of the arguments these days are about evolution and is that all there is? Is it's a physical evolution? It's a physical universe? Well what I'm saying in this theory is sure, yes, there is a physical evolution going on, but it's occurring in tandem with consciousness. And it's not like, you know, God is reaching in, he's doing this. No. We're struggling. Our consciousness is struggling. That life form is struggling. But they're struggling together. And they're working their way up together at the same level. This equally complex attraction. We come for you.